Many of you living in Chesham uh, will by now have received this poster. It was headed the new local plan and it will affect you. Chesham will get over 1,000 new houses in the next 22 years. And it goes on to ask the questions, where do we put them and how do we change our town to cope without more congestion, flooding, pollution and fewer employment opportunities? Council's given us a unique opportunity and we're taking advantage of it. Um, what about the finances of all this? It, it, it seems a, to be a tremendous amount of money to find. Yes, it is. You've got to put a scale on this. Uh, we are looking at getting a thousand new houses in Chesham. This is the target the District Council has set for us. It may be higher than that. Now, we can't just say no. If we say no, Central Government or District Council will give it to us and we won't, we won't have a choice where to put those houses. So if we're building those, we can then give us a chance to look at the whole infrastructure and the rest of the town, what we can do to make maximum opportunity of, of what's going on. I know you've cast your professional eye over Chesham <laughs> and in fact you've done a lot of research for the Chesham um, Society, including a 3D model, and have come up with some very interesting proposals for the town. Um, the main thrust is to bring the park into the town um, and all this yellow space is essentially um, public space. The town currently is very divided up by St Mary's Way. So here St Mary's Way would be um, sunk into, into a tunnel um, and the park would come into the town. Um, also, a key feature is, in order, once you've decided to um, sink St Mary's Way, is, is to bring the traffic that's coming in to, to use the town off earlier, because Star Yard um, and the area around the church where the buses come in and cars come into parking near the library is very much a bottleneck around that, uh, the roundabout. So our proposal is to bring traffic up um, up Whitefield and basically increase the off parking offer um, in the Waitrose car park. At the same time allow people to come off into the Sainsbury's car park um, with added parking for families or disabled people closer to the town centre. At the same time in improving, removing the telephone exchange, creating a lovely public route through to the high street. Um, and the key thing is that um, we're going to, the proposal um, uses the, in the park, uses um, the nature of the town, which is, is a water town, um, to create these lovely water walks. So Scotto's Pond, for example, would no longer have that rigid edge. It would become part of a larger um, green walks with perhaps pavilions uh, in these green walks, which is, is a character of Chesham, where you get um, this relationship between um, natural green space and a walled area. I think the problem is, of course, when we come on to development, yes. um, then Chesham is in a valley and it's sort of trapped in a corridor, isn't it? To, and so development could be quite difficult. Am I right in saying that? Yes, very much so. I think, you know, looking back at traditional um, paintings, early paintings of um, Chesham, one is always aware of the Chess River, always aware of the valley on either side and the town running down the middle. Um, and development has mushroomed out from that tight corridor um, towards the new town solve one problem in urbanism and you have to face usually another problem. At a certain level, piecemeal development is going to, going to cause uh, unsuspected ramifications and, and in a way a lot of the good buildings that have been lost in Chesham have been related to the, the issue of the valley, the constraints and how we get people through and deal with growing population. See, as an architect I can identify where I feel density would have the least impact, um, but there will be a significant requirement for some increase in density and that discussion has to be had because there are 
various solutions ranging from putting houses in the green belt um, so everything is low rise mm -hmm. to having uh, medium density sort of four to six story blocks mm -hmm. to having one or two towers in order to or so, some mm -hmm. high, high rise either mm -hmm. high density buildings either mm -hmm. more laid out horizontally or 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 a highway um, and where best to put those if that was the acceptable mm -hmm. approach all the buildings of the high street have yards which have real opportunity if you would allow um, restaurant, if, the, if restaurant, bar, retail, at the backs of the building, you could end up with a two-sided high street if they fronted onto a lovely, um, a, a lovely urban space. When you front, when things are fronting onto a car park, they become areas just for utility and rubbish. But the, the spatial dynamics of those, sometimes there's two levels, uh, the, their interesting shape of the yards because of the historical um, use as yards. Um, you mentioned earlier about the Cheshireman having the River Chess. Um, how would you see making more of the water feature then? There is a long tradition of water walks in Chesham, and, and uh, those are beautiful spaces next to a wall. So you have water on both sides of a path, you have walled gardens or walled buildings, and a natural area besides. Um, the water goes in and out of those areas. And so I think an introduction of water walks Yes. Um, with fountains, mm -hmm. with fountains and green spaces, mm -hmm. uh, rills and other other water features could be a, a very powerful unifying feature of the public realm, and bring back the character of uh, the original character of mm -hmm. Chesham, but in a manner that it doesn't affect the way that Chesham mm -hmm. operates. I like the idea when you uh, made reference uh, or made reference to churches should have some space around them, as you see it abroad, yeah. rather than be sort of stuffed up against or other properties built so close to them. Yeah, and I think, I think the, this brings up a very interesting issue because things, if you look at, let's take one example, which is the Star Yard car park. Well, um, the church that's built up against the Star Yard car park turns its back, in a way, on the car park because um, it, do, it doesn't have a square in front of it. So um, basically, it's, it's lovely to have the area, cloistered areas behind, but it's, it's, it, it, it's not really engaging. It's a bit lost, isn't it? Talking about spaces, the town has a number of large spaces, that they call them car parks. <laughs> uh, how could these be better utilised, do you think? Well, I certainly think that, that we need to build over car parks. That's, that's generally government policy, large flat spaces um, that, that have, when they're not being used for car parking, really aren't offering anything back to the town, could be utilised in a much more efficient way. Um, obviously, we, we need to you know, maintain the parking levels, people need to you know, the reality is people drive into towns, they need good access, good... Um, but I think we, have, we can enhance the routes between these parking areas. So you have a lovely journey to and from your car. Uh, and then if, if one has to position car parking slightly away from the centre, um, that journey is not, not a, a difficult journey, it's a pleasant journey. And one also has to allow for, for disabled or, or, or families mm -hmm. to park more centrally. You've made reference on occasions to cultural corners. Uh, what do you mean by that? In fact, you let us know. Yeah, so, so as, as one looks at um, changing the built environment, what one shouldn't think always... I mean, one has to look at it in a, a positive light, in a sense. And culture... C creating great cities requires uh, great public spaces. And those great public spaces need to be informed by activity, and activity, cultural activity, uh, is it could be a significant factor, and um, certainly you have the El Giva Theatre um, and it, and library services. We would like to enhance what's available and connect it, so there's a, a kind of easy um, pedestrianised way. Because it's not at the moment, is it? It's very split up. Isn't no, it? it's very detached. And the last question to you, Hugo is: It's all fine and it sounds great, but who pays for it? Well, clearly, clearly the only people who pay for it are, are development. Development is the only way these days to pay for things. Government's cutting, cutting money. But its successful schemes um, have had strong um, covenants placed on, on, on uh, building sites by government. Government needs to take a strong role in setting the parameters 
Um, there has to be, uh, I, I recommend international competitions for high quality buildings. There needs to be um, an expectation about good urban planning. There needs to be, uh, there needs to be a seriousness. Um, the local councils need to not be afraid to impose uh, strong constraints. They need to be able to understand the business of the developer. They need to be able to offer them enough profit but they, they can't allow it to be about maximizing profit. As soon as that comes in, the public interest goes out the window. Okay. Hugo, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Um, it seems a very ambitious plan this you have for Chesham. Yes, you're not the first person to say that. Uh, traditionally, what you think of is planning three or four years ahead, or we're planning 20 years ahead. Society has taken the lead here, hasn't it? Yes, it has. We've always worked very closely with the Chesham Town Council and when we had the first consultation 12 months ago, uh, we produced at that stage eight visions for Chesham. Now we've moved into a new consultation and we've started again and built on those, having thought carefully over the last 12 months what we'd like to do. Hmm. Now, people have said to me, um, or queried, the tunnel, you know, digging uh, St Mary's Way underground. Um, that, is that really a problem? Not in this day and age. Uh, tunnelling is not a difficult thing. It's done on larger scale. We're seeing what's happened in London with uh, Crossrail, but uh, we've got a very good resident engineer locally and his view is that it is a relatively simple project and the technology is available. The real issue is whether the whole scheme is commercially viable. We've done initial calculations and without going into detail, it does look cash positive at the end, significantly so. The worst thing happens and um, nothing is done here and central government impose, there will be problems, aren't there? There's a couple of problems. One, we won't have control the number of houses that come to Chesham and secondly, we'll have no control where they are put. And our concerns, there's three concerns we have as far as housing. And I've said we, frankly, we welcome a thousand houses being built around the town. But there's three things. Infrastructure's got to be supplied up front. Our local infrastructure is creaking now. Our biggest asset is our green belt and A and B, and we must preserve that at all costs. And thirdly, Chesham is very indif uh, different because it's been an industrial town. We've always had a commercial manufacturing base. We cannot afford to lose that. We must have jobs for our current uh, people, resident, and our children's children and children. So for people watching this video, um, the message is to them? This is, I think, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Let's make the best of it. Let's sit down and discuss this together. We present you, to you what we believe the centre of Chesham could look like. You've seen the model. Now we want to ask you, what do you like, what don't you like, and what would you like to put in that we haven't thought of? Tony, thank you very much indeed. Mm. So I would say, from a personal point of view, 
that to divorce this from the infrastructure and how people get from A to B is just really unrealistic. I think the session is at a crossroads for its future, and decisions made will have a long-term impact for future generations. And I think it's a microcosm of the country that we are going through a massive change socially and economically, and we have to make decisions now to ensure that there is a future for people. So it's been terrific energy, and the turnout's been huge tonight. So it's really encouraging that people feel really deeply about their town, as I do. I think Cheshire is a great town, and I want to see it develop and be a place to live. Great feedback from residents, and obviously the more ideas we can get and feed them back into Chiltern District Council, then the more influence we'll have over what happens with the development of the local plan, which is crucial for the future of the town. It was amazing how many people turned up tonight. It was staggering, actually. It took us a little bit by surprise, but that's always a positive. It's great. Unfortunately, a couple of people couldn't hear at the start, no, but yes, yeah, you, you never want to have an empty room, and I think it shows just how passionate everybody is about our town.